Hey everyone, welcome to Home Therapy. It's your host, Anita Yokoda. This is the podcast where we break free from our negative thoughts about our home and ourselves. As a licensed therapist and interior designer, I'm committed to bring you raw, relatable, and revealing home therapy sessions to help renovate the real in all of us. But guess what? It won't be all serious business. I love having fun, so we're going to definitely include the ridiculously crazy and funny moments we all experience at home. From DIY fails to spontaneous paint jobs and even discussions on how to decide on a style with your partner, how to motivate your kids to organize their spaces. Sound familiar? I get it. Even as a designer, I'm right here with you, navigating through these challenges and sharing the journey. New episodes drop every Tuesday, so get comfy, sink into your couch, because this is the place to get your home therapy, one session at a time with me, Anita Yokoda. Everyone, I'm so excited to have my wonderful guest, Lauren Lees, today. She is so amazing. I'm honored. I'm so grateful because I'm just literally fangirling right now. Oh, Lauren, oh, thank you sweet. for coming on. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for inviting me. Oh my gosh. I have been a fan for years. I don't know how many books I've been able to peruse and enjoy of yours, your design. Most of all, your perspective on life. And that's something I really want to delve in today because you're so special. Your voice is so, so special. And part of your perspective that I am oh, so attracted to is emphasizing slower moments and living and being transparent about struggles, but through the beauty and aesthetics of design or lifestyle. I know you even have clothing and- yeah. I mean, your shop is just filled with eye candy, in my opinion. So Thank listeners, you. you have to stop by. I'm sure you're already a fan of Lauren, but if you are new to her, you really need to go to her website and check out just all the things you do. As a designer, I'm thinking, what kind of energy do I want to bring into the space? And for you as a designer as well, you're very intentional with your designs and how you want to create that energy to help your clients thrive. Do you have any go-to designs to help that translate into spaces? I know for me, I love using paint colors or my go-to is skylights. If we can do it, mm -hmm. I always encourage that because even though we're in California, there's so many dark rooms. There's nothing else we can do but bring the light from above in. Right, right. I mean, I think the, for the first thing I kind of do is try to get to know their vibe and their energy because some people want that like booky cozy quietness and other people want that light and airy vibe or in different rooms they want different things i'm obsessed with nature i design interiors but i just love nature the outdoors natural materials and bringing the outdoors in so in my designs i'm really always thinking how can i connect my clients with nature the strongest. So it's big walls of windows. We're often taking out a, a wall with a small window and popping a huge one in. That's something we do a ton of. And we do a lot of doors too. And then for me, it is sort of an organizational thing in terms of the energy because so many people, when I ask them how they want to feel in a space, they're like, oh, I want to be relaxed, carefree and not have to worry. And to me, it's almost like you have to get your head in a really type A place and set it up properly. And then you can not worry. So it is about like finding a place for everything and sort of learning their habits. And I really love doing that in the kitchen because I feel like everyone spends the majority of their time in the kitchen, especially families. It's about how do we get you organized and then have that feeling you're after in the kitchen? So one of the little tricks I do a lot, I, I discovered this myself. I feel like I get really tired of standing in the kitchen when I'm cooking and chopping. I do a lot of secret stools behind the island. Oh. So you'll see like the normal stools on the one side, but I give the chef a stool <laughs> so they can sit and have a glass of wine and hang out and relax a little bit. That is so amazing. I love doing hidden coffee bars. That's one that just seems to crop up almost every project. Thankfully, my love clients that. love as much coffee as me. So it's very <laughs> fun to do. But secret stools for I am not great at meal prepping or preparing 
a lot of chopping and with Asian foods, there's a lot of prep, like a there's lot, a you know, lot stir of, fries, yes, yes. a lot of chopping vegetables. And yes. I'm just like, where's my mom? Where's my grandma? <laughs> my kitchen's kind of small, but maybe I can find a way to add some kind of seating. That's amazing. I love it. It's just like securing yourself like 20 inches on the backside and a little back stool with a tiny bit of back support. And then, yeah. Okay. I yeah. listeners, that's an amazing <laughs> tool here that we all have to implement back to nature. It, it's really interesting to me as I talk to so many creatives. Yes, we're designers, but I feel like we're creatives at heart. It is really interesting to see everyone's backstory and I'd see nature so, so much in your designs. Why do you think nature is so important to you? I spent a lot of time in nature as a kid. My parents were divorced. And so I would spend on the East Coast with my mom, but I would spend summers in uh, the Midwest with my dad. And he had a lot of land and we had one of those neighborhoods that I think there was, it wasn't our property. I'm realizing I was now on, but I was going on farms and- That was, was so common walks. though, right? That's yes. so common. It totally was and picking wildflowers and just exploring. And I just really loved it. Being in nature is so grounding. It's so physically good for you, emotionally good for you. It's what I think one of the things that keeps us healthy. So when we are inside, I, I think that the connection with nature is still really, really important to our health and being our best selves. Design is about helping our clients be their very best every day. I see it as the more we can you know, connect them with nature, the happier they'll be and better things will, life will go for them. Absolutely. As a therapist, I know the brain chemistry that happens when we're in nature and mm -hmm. what happens when we bring that into our homes. I'm so curious as a busy working mom, always wanting to know how to find little tricks and hacks. How do you bring in home therapy, the nature in your yeah. space to find that respite? One of the things that I have to do I've learned is really important I need a garden outside because if I this sounds crazy if I don't have a reason to work outside I can design all the patios I want that are so pretty but if I don't actually have work to draw me out there I find that I'll sort of not go outside as naturally I like to make sure I've designed myself some sort of little workspace outside it doesn't have to be a huge garden but I need something we've had geese and chickens and chores that make you go outside because if you're just waiting for the right time it doesn't necessarily happen I've obviously told myself I need to go on a walk every day for at least 30 minutes for optimal blah 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 but it's actually having to get work done another thing I do with my designs is I am door crazy you know where a lot of people would just have windows I personally in my personal homes and a lot of client homes do doors in almost like every room on the first floor so that people can just they're just drawn outside they can walk outside i love when doors are open and the curtains are blowing in like on a pretty day anytime i can create that moment because i feel like when that happens it takes your attention away from what you're doing because you saw the movement on the curtains and you're like you know what i'm gonna go outside there for a second and so you just kind of pop out which you couldn't do if it were a window Okay. I'm so glad you clarified because initially when you mentioned it, I thought interior doors, like upgrading your six panel to like a two panel. <laughs> and I was like, I really want that. It's yes. like blowing out a window, but you're blowing out more yes. doors, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. which I love. And so are you thinking like French doors or even single doors? Anything. It just really depends on what the architecture Structure. style at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the house that we're doing for ourselves, Right now, I'm doing doors that will pocket fully into the walls. So when it's open, it's just like a big old hole. Oh, can really. I visit? I really yes, want you to can. I would love that. House. I would love to. Okay, so I'm glad we got the door clarified. <laughs> I, that's a design go-to for intentional living. I love your point about making the outside have some kind of purpose. I live in sunny California. We cannot complain about the weather compared to the Midwest or the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I do find myself currently not having as much purpose outside. And of course, if I had a bazillion dollars, we could make lots of purposes outside. <laughs> yes. um, I'm thinking what's one or two intentions that I can bring out there to draw us out, all of us out more, especially now that family time with the five of us yeah. is going to be changing very soon. And I am trying to relish every moment of the five of us. I just admire your lens in living authentically. I, I think that's a big 
part of who you are and how it reflects in your designs. For people who may not feel as comfortable about being vulnerable or slowing down, what's your advice or perspective on slowing down? It is one of those things that I do think it does have to be a real decision, one that you make every day. If you're like us, you have a business, before you know it, you are just running, running, running. And so it really has to be intentional every day. I feel like so much of it does start out with that decision, but then your morning routine, the days that I wake up really early and read and pray and meditate and work out, those days are night and day compared to the days when I stayed up too late and I don't do the the positive things for me in the morning. So I think it is about deciding to do it and then being incredibly intentional. It's almost like seasonal for each season. I sort of write how I want my day to go, what time I'm generally waking up. I wake up a lot of mornings like at four or 4.30. And I feel like when you, you probably have this, but when you have a lot of kids, there's not a lot of time that you're alone. So if you wake up that early, you are guaranteed to be alone. I get a lot of thinking and reading done early in the morning, but I find in different seasons of life, I sort of put down what I want roughly my daily schedule to be. And I look at that a lot because the habits do not come naturally to me. I try to drive it home and keep to that schedule. And it really helps. I don't hit it every day, but it more than not when I'm actually trying to. That is great advice. I might try that because the seasons as they change are great markers to Mm -hmm. sit down and reevaluate. I was at a project a few months ago and the person who was coordinating the project She's like, yeah, after the event, when things die down, I go back and I think about what I can do differently or change for next year's event. And Mm -hmm. I know we always make mental notes after something happens. Oh, that was really great. But she actually makes the notes in real time and just evaluates herself, not in a critical way, but just very objectively. I'm like, wow, (laughs) she's so smart. I don't think I was like that at 27. It's similar to what you're saying. And I love this part is using seasons as a time signature to pivot because with daylight savings time, our activities do get impacted getting up earlier or later or ending the day earlier or later. For you with the kids part, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you have two more than me. I feel like every day, and I don't say this in a negative way, but it's just fact. Every day, the moving target to my schedule and disruption are my kids their yeah. schedules. I'll get yeah. a text from my 15 year old saying, can you pick me up now? Rehearsal ended early. Or mm-hmm. I had to bring all three of them to the dentist during school because there is no other times to match all three, you know, and things like that. Right. For you, can we delve a little bit into parenting and how sure. you juggle all of that? Sure. Well, Dave helping is amazing. So he is really the one picking up the kids from the bus and doing all of that. I had a couple of them in the office with me because they were sick. And I I think that when I had my first, uh, my son at 25 and that just like rocks your world. We got married when we were 23. We were like, we're not going to have kids till we're 30. We're going to have honeymoon for seven years. It's going to be great. Then came along Christian and it, it definitely got me to a place where I realized I was not in control anymore and I became okay with it. Because I think up till that point, we were very organized and this is how things worked. I feel like for me, coping with the madness that is their schedules, I actually think that's the hardest part of having kids. It's it's not having them at home. It's getting them everywhere and remembering everything and being a responsible parent. It's really difficult. I think it's being okay with failing because it's like we do forget things and not beating ourselves up and just the whole do your best and forget the rest. Yes, Um, yes. It just being more realistic with our expectations. Totally. And even at work, all the things you think you're going to accomplish in one day, well, I guess if I got one thing done, (laughs) yay me. (laughs) You don't know what's going to hit you that day. No, it's interesting because it's same with managing client expectations, right? And that's where the therapy part really comes in a lot of times for all of us. There is a very hopeful expectation that the project will go very smoothly. And then when hiccups do arise, it just rocks their world. And I understand the budget that they've invested in. Sometimes they can be hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? It's it's a lot riding on the line. Do you have a Lauren method of helping clients manage expectations during a renovation? 
You know, it's really funny. When I first started out in the business, literally that kept me up at night, how happy they were feeling and if they were okay. And quite frankly, if they're completely unrealistic expectations, I was always worried that I, I just felt bad when it You're an empath. Perfect. Yeah, it was just one of those things. In my first book, though, I remember just thinking, I can't go on like this, being worried because this crazy, unrealistic expectation can't be met. And we're very clear, maybe too clear about things are going to go wrong and it's going to be insane. We're going to be here with you, but it's going to cost more and take longer yes. than you thought. And that's yes. just reality. And if yes. you're not comfortable with that, don't do it because I think the first book I wrote, I'd heard somewhere, there's no such thing as a design emergency. And I truly believe it. We are all so grateful, are so lucky to be decorating, re renovating. This is amazing that we can do this. We need to have perspective mm -hmm. and not freak out because of whatever is happening. It's not a good way to go through life. No, it's not. And I think they appreciate our honesty. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. like then they there there's trust built because we're not BSing oh. them. So speaking about books, I know you've written so many amazing books. I have a few of them at my house. I love them so much. But could you, you share with us? I know you have a new book coming out. I have a new book. This one's called Beach Life. And it's all about what being at the beach does to us and for us. I did so much fun research about negative air ions and what they do for us, grounding, walking barefoot. Even if we're not at the beach, what kind of design sensibilities we can bring back from being there. It's all sort of written in a way from the process of first arriving at the beach. So the chapters are summer spirit. And that's sort of like in the spring when you think of the beach and you get all excited and you sort of feel really young again. Like my daughter, I got that idea because she was like, mom, it's in the spring. And she's like, I feel my summer spirit. It's like, it's just, I feel it inside. And she's like, it's warm and it's bright and it's happy. And I was like, where is it? And she's like, it's right here in my chest. And I see her getting excited. And so it's that moment of walking over the dunes and you find yourself again. The summer spirit chapter has a house that I've designed at the beach that embodies to me summer spirit. It's exuberant and joyful. And then there's another one about beach quiet. The stormy days hit you and you may get time alone reading on a hammock and what the quiet does for you and your mind. And then another one is wander and then dream. There's all these progression and, and how at the end, when you leave the beach, just leave better and how to take that out into your normal life, all with food and interiors and lifestyle moments throughout. I am so excited. I'm in sunny California and we have <laughs> lots of beautiful beaches, but to have that mindset and perspective, I think I'm going to be seeing interior design and lifestyle living in a different way. So I can't wait. Now, is it out yet? It's coming out May 22nd. So right before Memorial Day. So. Okay. So we can pre-order right now. You can pre-order now. Yeah. And pre-ordering is great because I think I've learned this. You get the cheapest price that it ever goes to when you pre-order, which is the trick I've learned. <laughs> oh, I had no idea. Well, definitely listeners, you need to pre-order Lauren's book. I'll provide the links and everything in the show description. Lauren, I had such a great time with you today. Thank you for coming. I did too. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry for all the crazy dogs and crazy. You know what? It only makes me feel more normal. Oh, so I am good. grateful. You are such an inspiration to me. Oh, and I'm I mean, so I'm glad. honored, honestly. I'm oh, honored, really. Lauren, thank you so much. Oh, I good. hope that I can come visit you. And if you're yeah. on a book tour or out here in Southern California, we definitely have to meet up. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Home Therapy with Anita Yokoda. If this episode resonated with you, consider passing it along to a friend, family member, coworker, or roommate. Spread the love one home therapy session at a time. New episodes of Home Therapy are released every Tuesday. Subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. To leave a rating or review of the show, head to Apple Podcasts and let me know what you think. I love hearing from you. Not to mention, you can stay in touch with me throughout the week seeing behind the scenes info and sneak previews of upcoming guests by subscribing to my website. All information about today's show and guests will be linked in the description of this episode. Thanks again for listening. I adore our time together so much, guys. Let's keep our intentions focused and calm. And as always, use your home as therapy.